One year after unprecedented blue-green algae blooms in some Oklahoma lakes, new blooms are beginning to appear. There is also a new law that aims to prevent panic when algae blooms occur, especially the type of panic that wreaked havoc last summer on the economies of communities that rely heavily on lake tourists. Tim Darst's family drove from Kingfisher to Fort Gibson Lake for an afternoon of swimming and boating. <laughs> Before getting in, he wanted to know whether the lake had blue-green algae problems, but wasn't sure where to find information. I um, don't know a lot about the blue-green algae, but we have heard of it in the area of lakes. Blue-green algae are single-celled bacteria that behave like a plant. They use photosynthesis to rapidly multiply when conditions are right. It's called a bloom. Blooms often happen when the air is still and hot, the water is warm and calm, and it has plenty of nutrients in it, such as fertilizer runoff. Most blooms look like a scummy pea-green mass floating on the water. Blooms can also happen below the surface. No, I was not aware of that. That type of bloom happened at Fort Gibson Lake in late June. I just wouldn't want my kids and family out in the lake if it was down below like that. Kent Dunlap is with the Army Corps of Engineers. The cell counts uh, were slightly elevated, uh, but the toxin counts uh, were actually lower. In a bloom, cell count is the number of individual algae in a single sample. Toxicity is the amount of poison the algae produces. There are dozens of different types of blue-green algae. This is one. Only a small number produce toxins harmful to people. Jay Wright is with the Department of Environmental Quality. We don't have a good idea of what triggers the algae to start producing the toxins or what triggers the toxins to produce certain toxins. Um, that's, that's just not uh, well understood science at this point. A new state law ordered the State Department of Tourism and Recreation to create a website to educate people about blue-green algae as well as serve as a place to post advisories when one specific algae Cylindrospermopsis. produces a large bloom, or if its bloom contains a certain level of toxin. Leslie Blair is tourism's spokesperson. If the cell count is over 100,000 or if and or if the toxicity level is over 20 parts per million. State Representative Dr. Doug Cox helped craft the law determining when to warn the public about blue-green algae. When consumed in large quantities by uh, uh, certain livestock animals, small pets, and our concern is infants, it can cause some symptoms, primarily gastroenteritis. Uh, exposure to blue-green algae toxin may cause some respiratory symptoms and a rash. Now these are very minor illnesses for the most part. I mean, certainly adults aren't going to be consuming a large part of, uh, of blue-green algae infested water. Uh, but it got a lot of publicity last year, kind of blown out of proportion. And as a representative, I wanted to balance the health care risk against the adverse effect of adverse publicity on our uh, lake tourism industry. He's referring to last summer when right before the 4th of July and Labor Day weekends, publicity about people getting sick from blue-green algae kept visitors away from many Oklahoma lakes and towns that depend on tourism. Cox says there's never been a large-scale outbreak of illness in Oklahoma caused by blue-green algae. The only serious human illness that I had found from blue-green algae were a case where a city water supply was infected with blue-green algae and the treatment process was inadequate. The only other case was when blue-green algae infected the fluid in a dialysis machine and patients on dialysis became ill from it. Lisa Fredeen is president of the Grove Area Chamber of Commerce, an area that lost a lot of business when fears about algae kept tourists away. Last year it had a very uh, panic, knee-jerk reaction. Um, it was the first time in many, many years, if ever, that we'd been affected by blue-green algae. and. Um, people didn't know what to expect. This year it's a lot calmer. I think people realize that um, it's not such a horrible situation as what we thought it was last year. Lake activity is thriving. We're having a great summer. Businesses have seen a real increase this year. To help educate people about algae, the tourism department is running public service announcements. Remember, if it's green on top, stop. And putting up signs at some lakes that say, go to checkmyoklake.com for information about lake water quality. The signs don't specifically say that's where people will find information about blue-green algae or advisories like this one, warning of a bloom.
If there is an advisory, we discourage swimming and contact with the water, but boating is still allowed. That is not protective of public health. Dr. Robert Lynch is with the OU College of Public Health. His lab researches blue-green algae. Dr. Lynch thinks the law is too restrictive. So the law says that state agencies can issue an advisory when the level of that one toxin exceeds 20 micrograms per liter and when the number of blue-green algae cells exceed 100,000 cells per milliliter. It also says you can only do that, you can only issue an advisory when that happens. So all the other types of toxins that are out there can't be used. Someone gets sick, can't be used. Dog dies, can't be used. It says you can only issue an advisory when those two things happen. Cox says the law is based on World Health Organization guidelines for blue-green algae warnings and could be modified if its protection proves inadequate. We think we've taken a balanced approach uh, of sorting out safety and business and finding that happy medium that will allow Oklahomans to still enjoy their lakes safely. To ensure lakes are safe, the law requires the Department of Environmental Quality to test lakes used as a source of drinking water. We have had uh, some cases this year where we have seen algal toxins in the raw water coming into the plant, uh, but we have not uh, had any cases where there are algal toxins present in the finished water that's being served to the public. All recreational lake operators, like the Army Corps of Engineers and the Grand River Dam Authority, must also monitor for signs of algae and test suspect water samples. GRDA manually tests samples from 14 sites around Grand Lake every two weeks, and more often if someone reports a suspected bloom. It also uses this automatic sampler to test the water column at three-foot intervals at this site near Langley every few hours. These are the readings from today. Like all tests on Grand Lake this year, it shows no sign of a bloom. But if one occurs here or at any other lake, an advisory to avoid contact with the water would be posted on the Check My OK Lake website.